If you're looking for more ways to incorporate English and literature and literacy into your art room, um, I've got some ideas I'd like to share with you here today. Obviously, we can be doing critique in a written format. Um, sometimes if you're doing this virtually, I have students comment on each other's um, Google documents with uh, something positive and something helpful uh, to make the project come out the best that it can. We do this at the sketch stage and then we redo this again at the end of a project. So writing can happen in that way. Another thing that I like to do is here, where we do every Monday, um, we take a famous quote from art history and then we kind of break it down. What do we think that the artist is saying? What, what is the main concept here? So we take just um, three or four minutes and we go ahead and write on the concept and then I have three or four students share uh, what they feel the, um, the artist is saying and then I share my thoughts but we reiterate the idea that nobody is necessarily right that we can have you know 20 different answers to the question uh, about what you think it means and they're all correct so um, that's kind of fun and relieves students of the stress of, of writing. Here's an obvious connection that we can make with altered books um, by breaking down the pages into um, five or seven chunks depending on the age of your students. You can incorporate writing skills uh, and ask them to, along with doing the artwork inside the book, to also be doing some writing inside the book. I never stress um, spelling or composition necessarily. I think an art can be learned by just writing. Um, so I incorporate that as much as I can into the work that they're doing. When the students turn in a project for me, I always have them do a little paragraph of writing so I understand what they were trying to do. Maybe I even ask them, what art elements did you use and where, and to write in full sentences. Just by doing this, you can actually help students in their other classes and increase their literacy rates. Here's another fun one to kind of explore uh, where we have idioms. So this is hold your horses. Uh, and this other one by an elementary student is carpool. So these are a fun way to kind of play around with idioms and then um, we can have compound words. So creating an illustration of a compound word in a way that it's not really meant to be seen uh, can be a fun way to kind of explore compound words. Here we have some decorative shoes uh, that are taking in um, ideas of walking through literature or walking through English. So if students are working on a particular book um, each student can get a different chapter and illustrate that on a shoe and then we can put all of them in a line and then it kind of tells a story. So it could be kind of fob, fa, fun like with um, The Hobbit, uh, if you think about the journey from one place to another and then back again, it could make for a really interesting display. Another thing I have students do is fan art. So this one is uh, Messi, a uh, famous soccer star. And the student did some artwork. Um, they incorporated a quote by um, Messi and then they would create a letter that would then get mailed off to them. We tend to keep the original and send a, um, you know, a photograph of the artwork. And sometimes we get replies, which is really exciting for students and encourages them to write and do their best. So if we're doing this in the art room, I have them bring it to their English class and then go ahead and check it for grammar and spelling and then bring it on back and give it another try and then we mail them out. So that can be an awful lot of fun. Here we have a box put into the form of a museum. So we can play around with the idea of literature and a story and breaking it down into the chapters and then creating a, a walkthrough of that, an individualized one. So if everyone's reading a different book, they can create their own walkthrough uh, gallery that kind of represents the book or students can work on different parts and create a gallery even within the classroom. That can be a fun way to explore things. So here's one of the art quotes, um, but then as an illustration. So we have some fun with that. They fi figure out what does the quote mean, and then through their illustration show what they feel uh, the meaning of the quote is and how we can learn from it. Here is an unfolding image. So we have a nine part uh, story. And this one is um, somebody who's going on a journey, you know, through the water and meeting a dolphin and a squid. So we can have the different parts sort of unfold. And I have a little video here that shows how it unfolds. And I will have a link below to the lesson so you can see how the paper can be set up to make this actually work. So it's a fun way to kind of incorporate um, animation without having to do all of the, the actual movement. By opening the paper, we're kind of animating the story, so that can be a lot of fun. 
Uh, here we have a playing card and you can pick a famous uh, character from literature or a famous writer uh, and then create a trading card. So a bunch of names can be put into a hat and students choose a different one to create a, uh, a fan card for. Um, or students can pick their favorite piece of literature and share about that. So creating a cover and then the back having a synopsis can be a great way to kind of explore. Another simple, simple one that I do with my elementary students is creating a comic book cover. So we do this as either a parody or using their own original idea. Um, I have this example where we just have the logo, title, subtitle, and main action so they understand what is incorporated into a comic book cover so it looks realistic in a way. Um, but this can be a fun way to explore literature in a very simple elementary sort of way. Here are a couple of sculptures, um, and these are idioms, so keep your eyes peeled. And we have another one here, eye candy. <laughs> so uh, working with sculpture, if you are an English teacher, I would suggest you pair with your art teacher uh, to make this work. They're going to be experts on material handling, and, um, and we'll be able to kind of figure out the best and easiest way for you to incorporate this in your English class. If you're an art teacher, you already know how to do this kind of stuff. Um, we used a base form of just some wrinkled up aluminum foil and then put plaster strips over top of that or paper mache. That can be fun. Story illustration or poetry illustration actually uh, can be a lot of fun. This is a illustration of the poem The Jabberwocky. We had students break down the poem into its stanzas, try and translate what it is that um, Lewis Carroll means by each of his stanzas because there is a lot of unusual English in there where he's kind of putting words together to make new words. And then here's one of the illustrations that was done with uh, collage. There are many ways of doing this. It doesn't have to be collage. It could obviously be a drawing, a painting, a sculpture, even with the words on it. So however you imagine it can be a lot of fun. But breaking up the um, stanzas of the poem into different parts, putting them in the hat and having students choose means that at the end you can display the poem in its entirety somewhere within the building and show off how we are incorporating art and literature uh, for our students. This other one I call the interview. Um, instead of doing a regular research paper, I have students do interview with a dead artist, um, so interview with a zombie, but you could certainly have them do an interview with a character who is long gone, and then they have to answer in first person. I find that we have a lot less problem with um, plagiarism when we attempt a research paper in this way, so we can have a lot of fun with that. Here's another one, it's a lenticular by putting images on an accordion folded paper. Um, one image on the right sides and another image on the left sides. We can come up with this dual image. So if you have a concept that needs to be shown like summer winter or um, you know the beginning or the end, you know before Frodo goes on his journey and then when he's coming home, uh, it can be a fun way to explore it. When, they, when they're put on a wall, as students pass by, they can see the beginning of the story and the end of the story on the same sheet of paper. So I'll have a link to that below. These are kind of unusual and fun, but it's really about the writing that's done afterwards. I call these mechanisms of unknown purpose. And we essentially do some recycling, pull some electronic gizmos and gadgets together. We have old computers every year that are just dead because the way the students kind of beat them up. So my librarian who is in charge of those knows to kind of keep them for me and then I get some special screwdrivers and we rip them apart. And we put them together with wooden bits and pieces and students are supposed to make it look like it could do something. Um, they don't have to describe exactly what it is. Um, and then we need to write about it. So we look up the Latin names for what it could be and then the students do a, uh, a paragraph writing or maybe even a little bit more of a story about what this amazing invention actually does. So this one, maybe it's a time portal uh, and the other one is supposed to bend space. So that can be a fun kind of exploration for creative writing um, if that's something you desire to do. But they make for some interesting sculptures and we've gotten some wonderful reactions from these. The last one I have up here is the comic strip. So this particular one is actually a character teaching people how the universe was formed but you could have a character kind of leading um, the audience through a story or through an English concept or how we write a paragraph, you know, what is required and what is desired in that. So using a comic strip to break down an idea into its component parts can be an awful lot of fun. 
If you're looking for other ways to incorporate literature into your art class, I have a wonderful series of books um, and you can order class sets through my publisher, firehousepublications.com, and they're the If Picasso series. So I have If Picasso Went on Vacation, If Picasso Went to the Sea, and If Picasso Went to the Zoo. So in here we explore um, literature in the form of poetry. So this is an Erte elephant, and the poem teaches about Erte, but also teaches about the elephant. And a little um, leaf underneath tells us by color whether it's thriving, threatened, endangered, or extinct. And we have artists uh, throughout re uh, history represented. Here we have a Calder camel. So we do use alliteration in this. Um, and we have male and female artists throughout history, um, uh, African-American artists, Native American artists, uh, artists from all over the world. We've got uh, Rufino Tamayo and his tiger, so representing the art of Mexico. And again, the poetry teaches about the tiger that used to be in Mexico and no longer is because he's extinct. That's why we have a brown leaf down here, and then the red one is they are endangered in other countries. We learn a little bit about the artist. So it's a great way to kind of incorporate literature uh, into what you're doing. Uh, if Picasso went to the sea is the same idea, only it's sea creatures. Um, so we can have Pedro Linares and um, the Alibrijes. Uh, so he was the originator of that. So the poem, again, teaches about this particular creature and then um, about the artist in Mexico. And instead of leaves, this one has little seashells that tell us a little bit more about the artist or about, about the animal, thriving, threatened, endangered, or extinct. This last one, if Picasso went on vacation, the idea of this is that we have different locations around the world, uh, different landmarks. So William Turner and the, um, the great Buddha of Japan. So we have a William Turner style painting. Um, this poem teaches about William Turner, but also about the Daibutsu of Japan. We can see where Japan is. It's highlighted in red. And then um, the last three lines of the poem teach students how to say yes, no, and hello in the indigenous language. So we have places from all over the world, uh, Diego Rivera and the Wailing Wall of Jerusalem. And again, how to say yes, no, and hello in that language in Hebrew, and then where that country is located. So these can be a fun way to incorporate literature. Uh, we can get you class sets of these books, so each student could focus maybe on a different animal or a different sea creature. Um, or we can get a class set of uh, three of these that you can have as a resource. And these are really great ways to kind of explore literature and incorporate that into your classroom. So uh, you can find those at firehousepublications.com and we'll have some links in the description below. So thanks a lot for listening. I hope you're able to incorporate some of this information. Please like and subscribe to these videos and check out some of the others for core content connections through art.